In today's video, I'm gonna be running you guys through my current settings for the Rust Console Edition pre-order beta. Before we get started, I would really appreciate if you guys are enjoying my content on Rust, then make sure that you give the video a thumbs up. And if you find this video useful, make sure you share it with a friend. So I'm sure for those of you who have had the chance to already play this game on console during its pre-order beta period, I'm sure you've worked out that controlling the recoil is not necessarily easy. And hopefully in today's video, I will give you guys some tips to help with your recoil control and help to make your settings as optimal as they can be to effectively control recoil in the console edition of Rust. And just a disclaimer, by no means have I mastered the recoil in Rust so far, but I've had a chance to shoot most of the guns quite a bit and some of the changes that I've made to my settings have drastically improved my recoil control and I'm sure they'll do the same for you. So let's get right into it. Press start and head to the options tab. Head over to controls and we're just going to run from the top to the bottom. You can see here that I have vibration on just because I feel like it really immerses you in a game but I've only got set to five so when I get jump scared I don't myself and I can hold the controller steady. Push to talk and quick chat I haven't worried about because they're not enabled during the beta period of Rust. I currently have the sprint input to toggle and I also have auto sprint on. You can see here that my crouch input is a hold to crouch. I personally feel like this makes crouch jumping a lot easier but as I get into more and more gunfights I'll let you guys know if I do decide to change this to toggle. However currently I think that a hold to crouch is the better option. Moving on, you can see that aim assist has not yet been enabled and we're not sure exactly how that's going to work at this stage. You can see that I've decided to use digital boost over analog acceleration. The digital boost essentially means that your camera speed will increase uniformly during large inputs of the thumbstick, while the analog acceleration gradually speeds up your camera sensitivity on a curve. For camera sensitivity, I've kept this reasonably high at 130%, and for aiming sensitivity, which is when you aim down sights with a gun, this is something that really had me stumped. <laughs> So this is actually a glitch, I believe, and having your camera sensitivity at 80% is actually quite low. So for this setting, you can turn it all the way down to 25%, which is actually the fastest camera sensitivity that you can have. So I believe that Rust has just got this the wrong way around at the moment, and I played the entire first wipe for my solo series on the maximum aim down sight sensitivity, and as a result, I was a massive potato. So I've moved this all the way up to 80%, which again is is a relatively low aim down sight sensitivity. And I found that this has drastically improved my accuracy and recoil control across the board. I found the camera sensitivity for sprinting seemed to work okay around about 90%. The things that you wanna consider for having a high sprinting sensitivity is that it's not only going to be used when you're being chased by someone, as in looking left and right, but also if you're trying to say, you know, run up a monument like Dome and you have a super high sprinting sensitivity for turning, then you're more likely to, you know, overshoot or misjudge your movements and fall to your death. So I'd be careful turning this up higher than you actually need it. And like I said, I found that 90% was a pretty nice middle ground. For vertical sensitivity, I would recommend having this as low as possible at 50%. Personally, I feel like this setting doesn't actually go low enough. And for me at 50%, the vertical sensitivity is still pretty sensitive. So I definitely wouldn't be going over 50% for this. Camera inertia, I haven't really played around with yet. I kind of like the idea of making my movements as precise as possible and not relying on extra, you know, inertia of a movement to, to pinpoint onto a target. But again, I'll let you guys know if I decide to change this setting at all. For the boost multiplier, you can essentially adjust how fast your camera moves when you push the uh, right thumbstick completely to the left or the right and again I left this at the default of 100% and I feel like the sensitivity for these settings can be achieved pretty well just with the general sensitivity. I don't personally feel the need to play around with this boost multiplier at all. A dead zone essentially means how much you can move your thumbstick before that movement is detected by your controller. So for example people who have a controller stick drift often put their dead zones quite high so that that little bit of drift 
isn't actually picked up by the controller. What I like to do with these settings is have my left dead zone set as low as possible because the left thumbstick is the one that you use to move your character around and you can really afford for this to be as sensitive as possible. For my right stick dead zone, I've actually turned this up pretty high. Um, again, whether I'll change this and lower it a little bit, I just personally felt like the right stick was overly sensitive and I was having quite a bit of trouble controlling certain guns. But again, it's not too high that it feels laggy, but it's high enough that it really makes your recoil on certain weapons feel a lot more controllable. I invert my Y axis because I'm a good bloke and my X axis is on the default setting, which is off. And a little bonus tip for you guys, because I've had so many people asking this question. If you head over to controller layout, open that setting, you can actually press the Y button to swap the special action. And you can see here that if you press Y, you can actually change the LB to head look. And I personally have mine set as head look in brackets hold, so that as you're running, you can hold down the LB button and look freely to the left and right to scout out your environment. The other thing that I will mention that I've seen a lot of people having troubles with is jumping back to the aim down sight sensitivity. If you try and have this at the maximum of 100%, which is the slowest aim down sight sensitivity, you won't be able to move your camera when you aim down sight. And I've had some people say that when they aim down sight, they can't look around with their camera and the reason for this is because they have their setting at 100%, which is the slowest aim down sight sensitivity. So that about does it for today. Thanks so much for watching this controller settings video for the Rust console edition. Again, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and stay tuned for the solo Rust series episode three that should be dropping sometime later this week. Take it easy guys. I'll see you soon.